everyone. It's our pleasure today to be sharing the stage, at least for me, with Deputy Chief of Staff to Pre President Barack Obama, Jim Messina. Please join me in welcoming him. Jim Messina previously served as Director of Personnel for the Obama-Biden Presidential Transition and as National Chief of Staff for Obama for America. Messina joined the Obama campaign from the office of U.S. Senator Max Baucus, where he was Chief of Staff. He previously held the same position for U.S. Senator Byron Dorgan and U.S. Rep. Carolyn McCarthy. He has overseen and consulted on political campaigns across the country, from Alaska to New York. He's a graduate of the University of Montana and attended high school in Boise, Idaho. Thanks again for coming. My pleasure. So we have a couple of questions for you because there are a ton of interns in the room, lots of young people who are just getting started in their political careers. So for you, what is it like to work in the White House? Uh, it's like a, a dream every single day. Uh, it's the single best thing. <laughs> it is as cool as you think it is. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you spend your whole life trying to get the job that you've always wanted. I remember when he called me and offered me the job, the president-elect said, hey, Messina, do you want to go change the world? Uh, and I thought that was the single best way to describe my job. Uh, and I've got to do some momentous things in the first 16 months. Nice. And what so far do you think in, in these first 16 months has been the biggest challenge in your current role? Uh, I would say the biggest challenge was health care. Uh, you know, there was a reason why it took 70 years and so many presidents to get done. It was the hardest thing I've ever worked on in American politics. And in the end, uh, one of the single most significant things. You know, when I die, I know I will be part of this, uh, an amazing thing that gives health care to millions of Americans who didn't have it and makes tens of millions of Americans' health care better. Uh, it will be something that's a crowning achievement for both the president and all of you who helped work on it. I know that uh, it, took for, it really did take forever, it felt like. I know especially for many of the young advocates in the room, it felt like we just fought and fought and fought for this to happen. Can you relive for us the moment when it had passed and just what was happening in the office? Uh, well, I can do one better. So we stayed up the night before the vote in the House, the final vote, negotiating to get the final votes. And I went to tell the president. I will never forget this. And the president was shooting hoops with Reggie. Uh, in their suits outside, kind of burning off a little, little energy. And I walked on to the basketball court, and he stopped, and he ran over to me and put the ball down in front of me, and he says, well, and I said, Mr. President, after 70 years of trying, we have the votes to pass health care in the United States. And he gave me this big hug and a fist bump and leaned over and whispered. <laughs> He did. There's a picture in the West Wing of he and I fist bumping. Uh, and uh, he leaned over and said the most true thing, uh, which was, I told you so. Um, uh, and that moment we knew that, you know, the next night had passed and, uh, and it all went very quickly. It was uh, a huge achievement of his. I, you know, when you spend time working with someone, you get to know them better than anyone. And I can tell you, after working with him for 18 months, he is the leader you all wanted him to be. And it was proven on health care work. Time and time again, people said it was dead, it can't happen, it's taken too long, it's politically too hard. And the president just kept saying, we're going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And he got it done. I know inquiring minds want to know. I know one of the central things that you just said, though, is that you did fist bump the president, which is something we've seen over and over in media. <laughs> now, can you say truthfully that you are a fist bump bumper previous to being involved with the president or post the meeting, post working in his administration? Uh, I would say I was a recent convert. Nice. Nice. And I think that's really one of the best qualities of a, of a true leader is when you start picking up some of the more colloquial things. And good staffing, right? There you right. go. That's right. I like it. Now, in the same vein, how would you compare working in the White House to its portrayal in the West Wing TV show? Uh, we cuss a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> that's reasonable. No, we're not as good looking. <laughs> Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, oh, look, I, there are some glamorous parts to it. Every, you know, every single day I'm a kid from Montana and I walk in and drive my car in through the gates at the West Wing and I literally every single day think to myself, you know, what an amazing, only in America can you go from Montana to, to the West Wing. It is truly amazing. Um, I do think the difference in working and all the other jobs I've had in this one is stuff happens every single day that you just don't expect. 
you know, like oil wells go off, mines collapse in West Virginia. You know, the challenges that this president has had are just monumental. When you work on the Hill, you don't have those problems. Right. And so dealing with some of those issues has been, you know, a very tough time. And knowing that there are a ton of issues that are, co that are constantly coming up and knowing that a lot of this crowd struggles with even 8 a.m. classes as big advocates as they are, how long does a typical day run for you? When do you get into the office? So I have a rule. I'm into the office by 7 a.m. every morning. Read the, the clips. There's a clipping service to do that. At 7.30, we have the gentle morning ROM meeting. Uh, where we sit with Ram, and it's always <laughs> calm and very placid. Uh, uh, then we have a bigger meeting with all the senior staff at 8.30, and then around 9.30 or 10, what we call senior advisors go into the Oval to brief the president, uh, and that kind of starts the day. And I try to get out of there by 9 p.m. every night when I go work out, uh, home about 10, try to get to sleep at 11, and start it all over again. What has been your longest day so far? My longest day so far. Uh, well, the story I'd like to tell about how weird this job is, is I went to lunch, which I don't usually do, and came back, and I was watching Robert Gibbs on doing his daily press thing. And that was a day that uh, someone had decided to fly Air Force One past the Statue of Liberty. Right. You guys remember this? Yes. Uh, and it scared a lot of people in New York. And I was kind of sitting there watching Gibbs get questions about it, thinking, wow, kind of sucks to be him today. Uh, and he says, well, the president has appointed White House Deputy Chief of Staff Jim Messina to investigate the matter. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and just then they came in and said, the president wants to see you. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, now, what do you believe uh, this administration has accomplished thus far? I know you talked about health care, but that will especially benefit the young Americans represented in this room. Well, as all of you know, we have the single most significant student loan reforms in the past 40 years that will save you tens of thousands of dollars, that will give you better access to Pell Grants, that will give you better education. Uh, you know, people don't realize but that health care bill contained these huge, significant changes that will be a major reason why we will continue to have the best higher education system in the world. Uh, that is a huge piece of news. The other thing is, as you all know, the health care bill allows you to stay on your parents' health insurance until you're 26. You can go do public service. You can go to... You can go do a whole lot. You have a whole lot more options knowing you have health insurance. I mean, look at me. I'm a good example. I took six and a half years to get through college because I kept leaving to go to work for campaigns or crazy progressive organizations my mother had never heard of. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, had health insurance sometimes, didn't have health insurance other times. It was a, a significant barrier. Uh, and when I finally got the degree, I was ready to go have this career that has turned out fairly well. Right. Um, and part of it is... That, you know, I had a great education system. Now, not all of you will be able to go to the University of Montana, but if you could, <laughs> you would realize it's the greatest school in the history of the world. It is. Uh, with the best football team. Right. Uh, but also prepared me to be a young organizer. I will say that as a member of Campus Progress and interviewer, I must reserve my personal feelings and affiliations. And so I'm only agreeing with the speaker about the best football team because of my current position. But <laughs> to root for the University of Miami at another point. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, I know we spent, um, as a community of young activists, a long time making some uh, key issues priorities this year, including college affordability and health care reform. And we were really excited about the results this year. Now, there are three key issues that a lot of people in this room, of course, and a lot of young people around the country um, would like to see a lot more progress. And I'm just interested in how the administration plans to make progress on each of the following. And I'll ask one at a time okay. to hear your feedback on what's going on inside the White House. So on immigration reform. So immigration reform, the president gave a major national address last week laying out a way forward on immigration reform. It's an issue that he feels very strongly about. This country has to deal with both our border security and our 11 million illegal immigrants that are in the United States and give them uh, a way to, to uh, pay their taxes 
a way to serve their country and move forward in a path to citizenship uh, while securing our borders. We've taken real steps on the borders. There's more work we need to do, but all that has to occur in a comprehensive immigration reform framework, which the president laid out last week, and I thought a very good and fruitful way, and we're continuing to work with the House and Senate to move on this legislation. Climate change? Climate change, um, an issue near and dear to my heart. Uh, last week, the president had I think, 20 or 21 members of the Senate in. As you all know, uh, energy reform legislation passed the House last summer. We are working hard uh, on getting it to the floor this summer in the Senate and working with members of both uh, Democratic and Republican Party and leaders of both parties to figure out a way forward on this piece of legislation. You're all about to enter the job force, and one of the single ways that we can best help you is creating jobs. And in a clean, sustainable energy future for this country is both an economic and national security priority for this president. And we can do it in a way that creates hundreds of thousands and millions of jobs by passing a comprehensive energy bill, and that's what this president is going to do. And last, but certainly not least, LGBT rights. So uh, this issue has is, um, been given to me by the president, and we have made more significant progress on these issues than any president in the history of the country. Uh, after 17 years, the president sat uh, in the East Room and signed the Matthew Shepard hate crimes bill into law. That bill took 17 years to get through. That bill took 17 years to get through. This president got it done in one year. And as you know, Don't Ask, Don't Tell is next on the agenda. Don't Ask, Don't Tell passed the House last month uh, in a historic vote, and the Senate Armed Services Committee passed it out. And we are hopeful that the bill that it is contained in will move forward this year through the Senate, will be on the president's desk to finally address uh, and end Don't Ask, Don't Tell once and for all. Yep. Now, you come from uh, many years on the Hill, and how would you compare the experience of working in the White House versus working on Capitol Hill? <laughs> Security's a lot worse at the White House. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, look, uh, I would say that um, whenever you're getting to do public service, I say this all the time, public service is a single, one of the single best things you can do. Service, it can be lots of different kinds of service, teaching, being a community organizer, being in politics, doesn't matter, it's all service. Uh, and every single day I get to go to work and make millions of people's lives better. And I have a picture of my five nieces and nephews and my dog on my desk. And those are the people that I'm working for every single day. And I've been able to do some things to make their lives better. Uh, and you have more of an ability to do that in the West Wing than I did on the Hill. Uh, and that's truly a privilege every single day. Uh, but the challenges are real. And, you know, what the president said in the campaign is true. Change is hard really hard and there's always a reason not to do change uh, and so that's why what you are all doing uh, is huge because you're all sitting here in the middle of the summer when you can be out doing 10 different things talking about ways to make your lives and everyone's lives better and for that I owe you thanks because what you're going to do to help this president in the next two years is truly going to change the country uh, and change the world and that's what we all have a responsibility to do so thank you. Those are definitely very inspirational words, but I know definitely for a lot of the people here who are currently working on the Hill, it's a lot of answering phones and it's, it's a lot of stapling papers and, and the red badge seems cool until, I know at least on the grassroots in the not-for-profit side, we're always like, huh, oh, at least we don't answer phones all day. All and right. so kind of how do you inspire people that, that truly are electing to such a great service? Like what, you know, What's your piece of advice for sticking in there and really being successful? Well, look, the, uh, all that matters in life is getting things done and making progress. That's why you're all here, right? And so there's many different ways to do it. I was an intern on Capitol Hill, just like a bunch of you are, and I was an intern for nonprofit sector. And I had a rule. The rule was I was going to be the first to, to get there in the morning and the last to leave. And I think now 
17 years later, I'm still the first guy in the West Wing in the morning and one of the last people to leave because I get to do this job. They're stupid enough to pay me to do this. <laughs> um, I would do it for free, but don't tell Rob. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and, and I would say just keep at it. Figure out what job you want next and go figure out how to get that job and understand that it takes everyone from, you know, intern answer in the front desk to Rahm Emanuel to all the way through that to get something done. I mean, why did it take several decades to get health care? Because these things are hard. Why hasn't the country dealt with climate change? Because it's hard. And it's going to take every single one of us. And you don't get off easy to say, oh, all I do is make copies. Someone's got to make the copies. And your next job, you get to answer the phone. Your next job after that, you can be Jim Messina. Um, so, you know, you can. I mean, I got to be it. And I, right. you know, public schools and was poor kid, you know, who put himself through school. And now I get to drive a cool car and work for the cool president. So, you know, <laughs> like, I, we all get to. I think also uh, in explaining to parents, especially in a down job market, why we choose these jobs. I know you just said that you, it took you six years to get through your undergrad because uh, you kept taking these jobs that your mom didn't understand. How did you explain to mom? Well, fortunately, she wasn't paying for school, so she didn't really get a vote. Right. <laughs> no, look, I, I looked at her and I had passion in my eyes, and that's what all of you have had. You know, I was talking to people in the back. They were like, excited. You're all happy to be here. You all want to do this. And that's what my mom saw. She looked at me and said, you know, he's happy. I've never heard of the place he's moving, and that's okay, you know, as long as he's happy. And uh, I think she kind of got it when she went to my first job on Capitol Hill, and she saw my desk and saw the view of the Capitol and said, wow, you're not a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, uh, I say to people all the time, the single most important thing I can tell you is do what you love. If you love it, you'll be good at it. If you don't love it, don't do it. It doesn't mean that you're going to love making copies or love answering the phone. But work for people and issues and things that every single day makes you motivated because you'll be a better staffer, you'll be a better person. And if you're not motivated at this, go find something you're motivated. If it's making cupcakes, go make the best cupcakes you've ever made, and you'll go be a hit at that. If it's, you know, I tried very hard to be the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos, that didn't work. <laughs> so I decided to go win campaign. You're right. Um, I think as my final question, in the vein of staying motivated, who do you look to to be motivated? Who are your role models? Uh, who are my role models? Um, I would say two. Uh, first is my mama, uh, you know, single mother raising a family, uh, who, you know, toughest woman I've ever met. <laughs> Give it up for the mom. Give it up for the mom. Uh, and uh, although, you know, you'll think this is a political answer, but it's not, uh, the president. Um, I watch how hard uh, it is to be the president of the United States in 2010, um, and I watch how hard he works at it and how hard he works to make the right decisions uh, and how much he's gotten done the first 18 months. Uh, and I couldn't be any more proud of the guy. Uh, and he's taking me to Vegas tomorrow, so that's good. <laughs> Well, it was really a pleasure talking with you. And again, please, ladies and gentlemen, help me thank uh, Mr. Messina for his time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was much. really Thanks. fun.